Nation building is constructing or structuring a national identity using the power of the state. It is thus narrower than what Paul James calls nation formation, the broad process through which nations come into being. Nation building aims at the unification of the people within the state so that it remains politically stable and viable in the long run. According to Harris Milonas, legitimate authority in modern national states is connected to popular rule, to majorities. Nation building is the process through which these majorities are constructed. Nation builders are those members of a state who take the initiative to develop the national community through government programs, including military conscription and national content mass schooling. Nation building can involve the use of propaganda or major infrastructure development to foster social harmony and economic growth. According to Columbia University political scientist Andreas Wimmer, three factors tend to determine the success of nation building over the long run. The early development of civil society organizations, the rise of a state capable of providing public goods evenly across a territory, and the emergence of a shared medium of communication. Topic. Overview In the modern era, nation-building referred to the efforts of newly independent nations, notably the nations of Africa but also in the Balkans, to redefine the populace of territories that had been carved out by colonial powers or empires without regard to ethnic, religious, or other boundaries. These reformed states would then become viable and coherent national entities. Nation building includes the creation of national paraphernalia such as flags, anthems, national days, national stadiums, national airlines, national languages, and national myths. At a deeper level, national identity needed to be deliberately constructed by molding different ethnic groups into a nation, especially since in many newly established states colonial practices of divide and rule had resulted in ethnically heterogeneous populations. However, many new states were plagued by tribalism, that is, rivalry between ethnic groups within the nation. This sometimes resulted in their near disintegration, such as the attempt by Biafra to secede from Nigeria in 1970, or the continuing demand of the Somali people in the Agaden region of Ethiopia for complete independence. In Asia, the division of British India into India and Pakistan was in part due to ethnic differences, which might have been aided by other factors like colonial mismanagement of the situation. The Rwandan genocide as well as the recurrent problems experienced by the Sudan can also be related to a lack of ethnic, religious, or racial cohesion within the nation. It has often proved difficult to unite states with similar ethnic but different colonial backgrounds. Whereas some consider Cameroon to be an example of success, fractures are emerging in the form of the Anglophone problem. Failures like Senegambia Confederation demonstrate the problems of uniting Francophone and Anglophone territories. Topic. Terminology, nation building versus state building Traditionally, there has been some confusion between the use of the term nation building and that of state building the terms are sometimes used interchangeably in North America. Both have fairly narrow and different definitions in political science, the former referring to national identity, the latter to infrastructure and the institutions of the state. The debate has been clouded further by the existence of two very different schools of thought on state building. The first prevalent in the media portrays state building as an interventionist action by foreign countries. The second more academic in origin and increasingly accepted by international institutions sees state building as an indigenous process. For a discussion of the definitional issues, see State Building, Carolyn Stevenson's essay, and the papers by Waits, CPC, IPA or ODI cited below. The confusion over terminology has meant that more recently, nation building has come to be used in a completely different context, with reference to what has been succinctly described by its proponents as the use of armed force in the aftermath of a conflict to underpin an enduring transition to democracy. In this sense nation building, better referred to as state building, describes deliberate efforts by a foreign power to construct or install the institutions of a national government, according to a model that may be more familiar to the foreign power but is often considered foreign and even destabilizing. In this sense, state building is typically characterized by massive investment, military occupation, transitional government, and the use of propaganda to communicate governmental policy. Topic. References Topic. 
Sources Engine, Keenan. 2013. Nation Building. Theoretische Betrachtung und Fallbeispiel, Iraq. In German. Baden Baden, Nomos Verlag. ISBN 978 3 8487 0684 6. Hodge, Nathan. 2011, Armed Humanitarians The Rise of the Nation Builders, New York, Bloomsbury, USA. James, Paul. 1996. Nation Formation Towards a Theory of Abstract Community. London, Sage Publications. James, Paul. 2006. Globalism, Nationalism, Tribalism Bringing Theory Back in Volume 2 of Towards a Theory of Abstract Community. London, Sage Publications. Mylonas, Harris. 2012. The Politics of Nation Building Making Co Nationals, Refugees, and Minorities. New York, Cambridge University Press. Mylonas, Harris. 2017, Nation Building Oxford Bibliographies in International Relations. Ed. Patrick James. New York, Oxford University Press. Smith, Anthony. 1986. State Making and Nation Building. In John Hall, ed. States in History. Oxford, Basil Blackwell, 228 to 263. Topic. External links. Fritz V. Menical R. Understanding State Building from a Political Economy Perspective. ODI, London, 2007. CIC, IPA, Concepts and Dilemmas of State Building in Fragile Situations, OECD DAC, Paris, 2008. Waits, Allen, State in Development, Understanding State Building, Defeat, London, 2008.